Hey there, my name is Matthew Peterson. I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works. Uh, we're located in Northeast Florida. And uh, I recently had done some trainings with a, with a company and I had a follow-up question from one of the uh, people in attendance that wanted me to take a look at their data and they were looking to get a rolling total uh, for some sales based on the different agencies that they had. And I said, oh yeah, we can definitely do that. Uh, and I gave um, the person the, the solution. They said, well, that's not exactly what I was looking for. Uh, so let me just show you what I thought he was asking, and then I'm gonna show you what we really want to do for his scenario. So if you take a look right here, this is the data that was uh, basically some dummy data he gave me. And he's got the different agencies, when the date of a sale was done, and then how much money was made from it. So not <laughs> some modest money here. And so I was like, okay, well, to do rolling totals, there's a DAX function uh, called uh, year to date. Uh, and it just keeps rolling up your totals and it's really simple to do in DAX. And so I said, well, that's probably what, that's what I assumed that he would wanted. And so if I take a look right here, and I'll show you this measure in a second if you're interested, uh, from November 1st, we have $10 of sales. And then when we go to December 1st, we have 15. So 25 is the rolling total. But then when it got to January 1st, it does a reset. And I'm like, here you go, this is great. Uh, and I'll show you what this formula is right here, my rolling total. And let me come on in and I'll make this larger and we'll zoom in. Uh, it's using a, um, this if is blank is just here so that I don't get blank values. Uh, but this total year to date, it says I'll take your total sales measurement, which I just said sum up the sales column. Um, and then you just feed it the dates and DAX is super intelligent enough to figure out how to do this in the background. And then he said, you know what? I don't want that. I actually want it to continue from the very first initial transaction to the most recent one that we have. And so then I had to go back to the drawing boards and go, okay, well, this isn't what you wanted. So in order to get the solution that he was looking for, and if you're ever looking for finding a rolling total uh, for all time, uh, we can make a calculated column. And to make it a little bit more fancy here, he also wanted it based on the different agency that was being reported on. So agency A, and then dissect it down to agency B, C, whatever kind of qualifier you might have here. So let's take a look at how we can do this with a calculated column. So I'm gonna come back over here into our data view. And the issue is, if I put in a calculated column here, and I say, let's just sum up the sales table, let's just take a look at what that actually does. So I'm gonna come on over, we're gonna add in a new column, and I'll zoom on in here and make this larger for us. And I'm just gonna say, we'll call this the rolling total. And so if I simply say, hey, I want to sum up what column, uh, it's my sales column from the sales table, and we close that off and I hit enter, notice what's gonna happen each time. Oop. Oh, I already have a rolling total measure here, so let me, uh, I'm gonna call this the, let's close that out, let's give it a proper name. Uh, we're gonna call this the rolling total column. All right, now let's see the results of this. And so it reports 72 every single time because it's taking this, this is called row, uh, this is called filter, sorry, row level context. And so what happens is when it's running this calculated column, it's doing it on all of the numbers. It doesn't know that it's only supposed to be doing it for, you know, one for row one or only for row two, et cetera. So what I had to do is I had to figure out a way of saying, okay, when you're on row one, I only want you to add, for agency A, I only want you to add this number 10. But then when we move down to agency A for the second sale, here I want you to add the 10 and the 15. And then when I get down to the next one, 72, I want you to add the 10, 15, and 13. And then when you move to agency B, don't worry about those three numbers. Agency B for the first sale should just be the 18. And you get the picture going forward. So how can we do this? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use variables to return a filter down table, return the current date of our row where we're making this column, uh, and then add all the numbers that are left in that filter table. So let's take a look at how we can do this. So we'll get rid of this here and we'll zoom back on in, and we're gonna make this the appropriate column here. So I'm gonna use variables because it's just a little bit easier to understand our formulas by using variables. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna use a variable first, so just VAR, and I'm gonna call this the current date. because I wanna reference the current date that we are on for every single row. And to get the current date, I'm gonna say the current date is equal to, 
I want it to be look at the sales and look at my date column. So now it should reference whatever date is currently going to run the calculated, uh, make the calculated column formula. And now I'm going to need to do another variable here as well. So let's have this over. And our next variable is I also have to make sure I'm only doing it for the agency of the row that I'm on. So I'm also going to make a variable called the current agency. And this is going to be equal to, again, we want to reference the agency column. All right, so now I have, uh, for every row, I will now know what the current date is and what current agency I am on. Now, where are we going to use those next? Well, now I'm going to use those variables to filter a table down. So I'm going to call this the filtered table. And this is going to equal, we're going to use our filter command here. So we're going to say, let's filter down a table. What table do I want? Well, the table I'm doing this on, which is my sales table. So we got our sales table. And now we put in the expression. And so what were we really trying to do here? Well, we wanted to always return the results for the date that you're on and any previous dates for also the agency of the row that we are currently on. So what I have to do here is we're going to say, let's take the sales date. So reference the current sales date. Um, and I want to return all dates that are prior to or equal to our current date. So it's going to look at the whole sales date column of my sales table. And it's going to show me just the dates that are less than or equal to the current date for the row that I'm on. So we're going to put in here our current date. Great. That's not the only requirement. We also want to make sure that we're only returning the agency of the row that we're on. So that's why we had to use this current agency. So we're going to go ampersand, ampersand. That's just like an and statement here. And we're going to go now with, you know what, just to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to shift this down so we can see it all as one. And we're also going to say that the agency needs to equal the current agency of my row. And that's why we're declaring these variables um, at the very beginning. And then that should filter out my table. Then the ultimate goal is I'm going to return that filter down table and then just going to calculate all the numbers that are left within that table. So now I need to go into my return statement. After you declare variables, when you want to actually execute a formula to run, um, to produce a result for you, you have to use your return function. So we're going to say, let's return. All right. Now, here's where we run into one more issue. Um, and we're going to be using the function called calculate. Because what calculate does is it will do a calculation for you, but you get to say the filter that you want. Without calculate, it automatically uses your row level filters here. So we're going to say, let's calculate. And then we have to give it an expression. What are we trying to calculate? Well, I want the sum of my sales column. So we're going to go up here. We're going to go sum. And now I need the sales column. So sales, I'll scroll this down just a little bit. Sales, sales, right here. And then that is what we want to be doing. However, here again, we want to do it on that filter table that I had declared up earlier. So we're going to say, do the sales column. Normally, it would just do it on the, that, that whole column, but we're saying, hey, we're, gonna, we're using the calculate function not to do it on the, whole col on the whole column, the whole table, but on our filter down table. So now what we can come over here and do is we're going to say the filter is going to be our filter table. And we will close that off. So it's going to find the sum of the sales column, but it's not going to do it for the whole table, which is what it currently was doing and giving us these 72s it's going to do it based on our filter table. So if all is right in the world and we hit enter, we should see our results. And they are picture perfect. Take a look. We have 10 for the first. Then on the second one, 10 and 15 make 25. Beautiful. When we get to our third sale of agency A, it's adding all the numbers from January 1st and prior because we said the dates are going to equal the current row date plus any previous dates. And it's all just for agency A. When we skip on down to B, it starts over again. Well, it doesn't really start over, it just does its job. It takes the current date, which is November 1st, brings back and the current agency, which is B. So technically, that brings back that whole table. But then we say, hey, we only want to bring back the dates from here and prior. Well, there's no dates after our November 1st. So that's why we're only getting that. And so not only does this work right here as the column, but what we can now do 
is if we come back over to the report view and I add this in, so now I'm going to take my rolling total column, add this in, and now we see the results. So again, I'll get rid of this up here and I'll make this table come down just a little bit so we can actually see it without that formula. That rolling total was kind of great because it was a year to date, but then we got that issue. But here, it doesn't take the, the it doesn't reset when you get to that new year. So by using variables, declaring um, what we want those kind of filters to be, we use those in a filtered table, and then we wrap it into a calculate statement. Uh, and I can see where this would be beneficial in a lot of use case scenarios, so I hope this helps you out. Uh, if it does, make sure to like, subscribe. Also, if you are interested in any formal training, whether it be live training in person or our on-demand learning products, uh, take a look in the description below for 20% off coupon. Uh, and please let me know, is there anything else that you would like to see in the future? Uh, and I hope to see you in future videos.